Hi, I'm Tess, and this is Blind Crime. With cases like these, you'll never see it coming. Hey everyone, welcome back to Blind Crime. With cases like these, you'll never see it coming. I want to apologize that there wasn't an episode last week. If you follow me on the social media platforms, then you'll know that I fell last week and fractured my foot, and for nearly a week, I could barely walk. On top of that, the pain medicine they gave me also had me pretty out of it. And even if I could have made it to my computer, I would have not been in the mindset to write and record an episode. So I hope that you all understand and thank you so much for being patient with me. Also, if you live in the South and you've been part of the snowpocalypse of 2024, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm a winter soul and snow is my absolute favorite. And being in this stupid post-op boot I have not been able to get out and have any fun in it. Although I may decide to walk to the mailbox today, though, feeling kind of brave. But enough chit-chat. Let's get into this case. This week, we are going to be talking about a case that I covered last year when I first launched the podcast. But I wanted to do it better. So today, we are going to be talking about the disappearance of Jansen Brewer. Jansen Alex Brewer was born June 28, 1989, in Lawrence County, Tennessee. He was a country boy through and through. He grew up in the heart of the South, where fishing, back road riding, and mudding were some of his favorite things to do. Jansen was the kind of guy who you just wanted to be friends with. He radiated happiness and kindness and joy. And even whenever he was having a bad day, he would always do whatever he could to make you smile. He was also a family man. He never went a day without calling and checking in on his mother and did everything he could to see and talk to his kids as much as possible. While things didn't work out between the mother of his children, he loved his kids more than life itself. When I say that they were his entire world, I mean that with no reservations. Jansen had a smile that a blind man could see. And I can say that because I'm blind sometimes. Like I said, he radiated. He wasn't a perfect person, but he also wasn't your typical dude. He was raised to respect his mother and father, to say yes sir, no sir, to respect women, and to be a good person. And Jansen was, without a doubt, a good person. So when Jansen went missing in August of 2016, the whole town of Lawrenceburg was in disbelief. A quick fishing trip to Iron City, about 20 minutes to the south of Lawrenceburg, turned into a lifetime of questions with no answers for Jansen's family. As of today, there are still no leads and only more questions as to where Jansen is and what happened to him. This case is close to my heart, and it's my hope that with enough light shed on his story, Jansen's family can finally get answers, and this case can finally be closed. August 19th, 2016. A day that the family of Jansen Brewer will never be able to forget. A day that was supposed to hold a carefree, relaxing time at the river turned into a nightmare. Jansen and a few of his friends had decided the day before that the 19th was going to be a good day to go to the river and go fishing. Jansen had called one of his brothers that day to invite him to go with him, but his brother had to work the next day. He did tell Jansen that there was worms in the refrigerator and he was welcome to have them for bait. Now I'm sure his brother wishes he had played hooky instead and gone with him. The next day, on the 19th, 
Jansen went and got the worms and then came into town to get extra supplies for the day. Once everything was loaded up in a silver Ford Ranger, the group of friends made their way south to hit up the river and see what they could catch. I'm not much of a fisherman. The only time I went fishing, I hooked the fish in the eye and it died. Maybe that's why I have vision issues. Anyways, Jansen was an experienced fisher, and he knew exactly where to go to find the best catch. This spot in Iron City was apparently a pretty poppin' place to go fishing. So he, I'm sure, was pretty excited to see what the day would hold. Unfortunately for Jansen, though, this would be his last known whereabouts. After several hours of being gone, family began calling Jansen to see when he would be home, to check in, and to see how he did on his fishing adventure. But cell phone service in Iron City is shoddy at best, and so most of the phone calls never went through. As the day turned into night, and no one had heard anything from him, Jansen's family began to grow concerned. It was not like him not to call or not to come home. As the night continued, and no one had heard anything, Jansen's family called the local police, just to see if they could file a missing persons report or what they needed to do. They were told that they needed to wait at least 24 hours before doing anything, which I think is just such crap. We've all heard that the first 48 hours are the most crucial when it comes to someone missing. So why do you have to wait 24 hours to report someone missing? If you know someone and know that they wouldn't just not show up or call, you should be able to report them missing the day of. And Jansen's family knew that Jansen would not just take off and not at least call. Okay, we're going to jump into an ad real quick, and then we will be right back. Thank you so much for listening to that ad. I surely appreciate it. All right, the next day, there was still no word from Jansen, no sign of him anywhere. His family called the police again, and they were finally able to file a missing persons report. That same day, one of the friends who had been with Jansen showed up at his mother's house and immediately they began asking where Jansen was, since he had just been with him. According to Jansen's brother Josh, his friend started acting very sketchy and weird and said, I gotta go, and then left. It would be days before anything else came to the surface about Jansen, and even then, what was being reported wasn't much to go on. Tips were called in, but they were dead ends. The family was told by people throughout the town that Jansen took off with another friend, Daniel Sean Braden, and they were on their way to Florida. Braden had ties in Florida, and it was said that the two had taken a spontaneous trip down there to either look at or buy a car for Braden. I'm not entirely sure the details on that one. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation looked into this lead and coordinated with the Florida State Police and found no signs or evidence that either Jansen or Braden were ever in or traveling to Florida. Other leads came in. Jansen was killed over drugs and buried at a local farm. Whenever I spoke with Jansen's brother Josh, he assured to me that Jansen was not a drug user. So he knew that this couldn't possibly be true. However, cadaver dogs were still sent to this farm just to make sure, and they found no evidence of Jansen. The family was also told that Jansen was fed to hogs and not buried, but still nothing concrete to go on. Josh also told me that he was told that Jansen's body was in a cave somewhere and that he has searched every single cave that he can find in the surrounding areas, but nothing has come up. The rumors flew around Lawrence County, but nothing ever brought any kind of answers or actual leads. Jansen's cell phone was found smashed and busted near the Lawrence County Airport, which is about 35 minutes from Iron City where he was last known to be. He had no ties to the area around the airport, so his cell phone being found there was especially confusing to the family and to law enforcement. As far as the family knows, no data was retrieved from the cell phone. 
whether that be because of the condition of the phone or lack of the ability to do so, or in my opinion, the lack of the desire to do so. No one knows what was on the phone. Text messages, calls, location. Those are vital in a missing persons case. And no attempt was made to pull anything off the phone. Even if the phone was beyond use, can't they retrieve the SIM card and pull stuff from it? Even if it was a prepaid phone, there has to be something on it that they can get from it. It just blows my mind that they haven't even tried to get anything off of it. Searches have gone underway across Lawrence County in hopes of finding something somewhere that would bring closure to Jansen's disappearance. But again, absolutely nothing has come up. Jansen's family has organized search and rescue teams, the FBI, the TBI, dive teams, and everything else short of a private investigator, desperately seeking answers to where their beloved son, brother, dad, and friend has gone. The lack of evidence, the fact that someone knows what happened and is refusing to come forward, the fact that the family still has zero answers, it just breaks my heart for them all, especially as kids. They loved their dad, and he loved them. And to have your kids ask, where's daddy, and you not be able to tell them because you genuinely do not know, I can't even begin to imagine the heartache that comes with that. It is such a sad situation, and if someone would just come forward, if someone would just say, hey, I know something that might be beneficial to this, that would entirely change the game. I know someone knows something, and right now, the person who took or hurt Jansen is walking free, and that needs to change. Jansen was last seen on August 19th, 2016. He is a white male. At the time of his disappearance, he was 29 years old. He would now be 36, soon to be 37. He is 5 feet 8 inches tall, weighed 175 pounds, has brown hair and hazel eyes. He was last known to be driving a silver Ford Ranger with a sidestep. If you or someone you know has any information whatsoever about the disappearance of Jansen Brewer or Daniel Sean Braden, please call the Lartsburg Police Department at 931-762-3626, the Criminal Investigation Division at 931-762-1608, or the TBI at 615-744-4000. If you know something and want to remain anonymous, please send me an email at blindcrimepod at outlook.com and I will get the information where it needs to go without mentioning your name. Please help us find justice for Jansen Brewer and his family. I know that this was a short episode, but unfortunately, there's just not a ton of information surrounding it. All that we know is that Jansen was here one day and then gone the next. And aside from the cell phone, there's not really anything else that's been found. I think that maybe his friends know something. That maybe they they know who he was seen with. Maybe this Daniel Sean Braden guy. I've personally heard rumors that this Daniel Sean Braden was, you know, into drugs and they got taken by, you know, the South's mafia or whatever. But rumors aren't going to do any good without evidence. You have to have some sort of evidence. And that is what is really lacking in this case. And that's why I so firmly believe that Somebody around here knows something. Somebody in Lawrence County knows something. And if they would just say something, it could change everything. So please, if you know something, anything, you may think that it is totally insignificant. You may think that it is not a big deal whatsoever. 
but what you know may be what flips this case around and what finally brings answers to this family. All of the phone numbers that I listed before and the email will be put in the show notes below. So if you have any information, you can send me an email or call any of those three numbers and it will get where it needs to go. That's all that I have for this week. So until next time, keep your eyes open.